people. Today we are going to be covering physical properties of alcohol, such as boiling point and acidity. So let's get started. So, does an alcohol or an ether have a higher boiling point and why? An alcohol is going to have a higher boiling point. And the simple reason for this is hydrogen bonding. So, this is the alcohol because of hydrogen bonding. A key thing to note when it comes to boiling point, the more branching you have, the lower the boiling point. That's not a P. There we go. The lower the boiling point is going to be. Okay. So definitely remember this is a key thing when you're looking at different molecules. So knowing that alcohols have a higher boiling point than ethers, in the next problem, which one do we think is going to have the higher boiling point? For all of you guys who immediately said the one on the left, you are totally right because this is an alcohol. This is an ether. <laughs> alcohol wins. And the explanation is the same thing like we said, higher BP. Let's see if my iPad wants to work with me right now. There we go. Because of hydrogen bonding. Sweet. Okay. So on to the next one. Which of the following will have a higher boiling point? The one on the left or the one on the right? Keep in mind, we were talking about how higher, the more branching you have, the lower the boiling point is going to be. So which one has more branching? The one on the right. So the one on the left is going to have the higher boiling point because it has less branching, or in this case, it doesn't actually have any branching. So now let's just rank the following in order of descending boiling point. So remember, more hydrogen bonding, higher boiling point. So knowing that, first one is going to be A. That's gonna be the highest because we have two alcohols on there, so double the hydrogen bonding, higher the boiling point. Next is going to be B, and the reason for this is because hydrogen bonding again, and it has less branching than C over here. So now we're left with C and D. C has an alcohol in it, so it has hydrogen bonding. D is an ether. Alcohols are always going to have a higher boiling point than ethers. So it goes C then D. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, practice all the practice problems you possibly can for this, and these will be really simple points to get. Alrighty, guys, so now we are going to work on acidity, at, uh, acidity and basicity, and the first thing we're going to look at is our regular old alcohols. So an alcohol is considered an acid or a base. It usually acts as an acid, but I think Dr. West mentioned in his lecture that sometimes it can be considered a base. But in normal circumstances, when we react an alcohol with a base, such as an OH, what will happen is one of the lone pairs of electrons will take this hydrogen, give the electrons back to the oxygen, and we end up with a negative charge on the alcohol or the molecule that used to be the alcohol and we make h2o so when i say the conjugate base of an alcohol i'm looking for the naming of this right here and we are going to call that an alkoxide that is going to be super important throughout the semester uh so just try to remember conjugate base of an alcohol is going to be called the alkoxide uh so next up Something to review from Orgo 1 is acidity of different types of bonds. So a primary bond is going to be, or a single bond, excuse me, is going to be less acidic than a double bond, which is then less acidic than a triple bond. So if we go from most to least acidic, your triple bond will be the most acidic. And then our double bond and finally our single bond. With that being said, if we look at this molecule, the hydrogen here on A will be the least acidic, 
the hydrogen on B will be in the middle, and then the hydrogen coming off here on C will be the most acidic. So C, B, A. Next thing we need to do for acidity is consider something called resonance. Uh, back in Orgo 1, you guys did cardio, so I would review that. We're only going to cover like bits and pieces of cardio, but resonance is super, super important. So here, we already mentioned that a triple bond is acidic compared to a single and double bond, but one thing we have to keep in mind is the atom that the hydrogen is actually attached to, which is the A of cardio. This hydrogen, this one, and this one are all attached to electronegative oxygen atoms, whereas the one on the triple bond is still attached to a carbon. So we know automatically that this one has to be the least acidic. And then between A, B, and D, we can go on to look for resonance. Between these three answer choices, one of them does not have any resonance whatsoever, and that would be A. So A is going to be the second least acidic, and I will write down the order at the end, but I just want you to think about it for a second. Now we have B compared to D, and I'm going to go ahead and draw that again on the side for you so we can do resonance. When we do the resonance on a benzene ring, we're gonna be able to go all around the ring and we're gonna have a bunch of resonance structures versus on the carboxylic acid, we only have one other resonance structure. So the first thought that every student has is the phenol must be the more acidic one because it has more resonance structures. And while that is a completely valid train of thought, it's not correct in this case. And the reason for that is there's more resonance, but it's not as good. What I like to call better resonance is when the charge is being held on an electronegative atom. So here, the charge is always going to land on the carbons. Here, the charge is always going to land on the oxygen and the oxygen, <laughs> I should say. So if we look at it, the negative charge will be on an oxygen and the positive charge will also be on an oxygen versus here. We're going to have a negative charge on a carbon and the positive charge will still be on the oxygen. Between these two, the carboxylic acid is going to be your better choice. That being said, if we rate this in order of most to least acidic, we will have D is number one, and then B, and then A, and last but not least, C. So now we're actually going to do an acid-base reaction. First things first, we're gonna label our acid and base. We said before that nine times out of 10, our alcohol is going to be the acid, and we can confirm that because the nitrogen here has a negative charge. The negative charge is always going to be the base. So base and acid. The electrons on the nitrogen are going to steal that hydrogen, give the electrons back to the oxygen. So in the product, we have the conjugate base, which is an alkoxide, and the conjugate acid. So now let's say we're trying to find out which one of these is the strongest base versus which is the strongest acid. For this, we're going to look at electronegativity and how tightly each of these will hold onto its electrons. So if we're looking for the base first, our strongest base is going to be between N minus and O minus. Take a second to think about which one of these you think would be the best base and why. And the answer is the nitrogen is going to be the better base because it is less electronegative. And if we think about it, it makes sense because oxygen is super, super tightly holding on to its electrons and it doesn't want to give them away in order to get another hydrogen. 
The nitrogen, though, is a little bit more likely to give away the electrons if it's going to be happy with a hydrogen. So I'm going to say stronger base. And you can use the exact same logic to find your strongest acid. Between OH and NH, our OH is going to be the strongest acid because, like we said, it really, really, really likes its electrons. So it's going to be more likely to give away a hydrogen to get its electrons back. Hopefully this makes sense. So we mentioned a couple things. One, we're going to look at charges. Obviously, that's the C of cardio, but all of these are neutral. So next up, we have atom. So let's actually go through and highlight which hydrogen we're going to be looking at in each of these cases. All right, now that that's drawn in, one that you automatically see sticking out is this carboxylic acid. So that's the only one that's bonded to an oxygen, which is electronegative. So we can automatically see that E is going to be the most acidic. Next up, we actually have a lot of factors going on here because we're playing with our triple bond. But one thing I want you to look at first is resonance. So as I mentioned, the more resonance you have, the more acidic you're going to be. Between A, B, C, and D, the ones with the most resonance are going to be C and D. C also has this additional benzene ring in there, and it can resonate with not only one, but two carbonyls, but then additionally this whole benzene ring. So next up is C. And after that, I mentioned that D also can resonate with both of these carbonyls. So that will be next up. And then between A and B, this is where it can be a little bit tricky. But if you think about it, on B, we're going to resonate again with this carbonyl. Versus A, we're going to resonate just with this triple bond. So it will be B, and then A will be the least acidic. Next up, let's look at this big, ugly molecule. I gave it to you on purpose so it would look kind of scary, but we're going to look at the same exact ideas, right? One thing I do want to mention, though, is probably a term that you forgot from Orgo 1. We're going to talk about the benzylic position, the allylic position, and the vanillic. We are one carbon away, so this position right here. Allylic is the same idea, but with a double bond, so this hydrogen right here. The vanillic is interesting because it's right on the double bond. So the difference between allylic, which is one carbon away, and vanillic, which is on the double bond, is stability. So between these three, the most stable is benzylic, and then we have allylic, and vanillic is trash, absolute garbage trash, in like 99% of cases. So vanillic is super, super not acidic. It's very not acidic for this purpose. So if we see any hydrogen on the vanillic position, that's just ew, garbage. Benzylic is super, 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 super amazing. It's like the best we can have right now. And then it's allylic. And then we would have triple bond, double bond, and then single bond. All right, that being said, that was a really long-winded explanation. But now looking at this, we're gonna cross out E because that has no resonance whatsoever. And we're gonna cross out C because it is in the benzene ring. Automatically, you see that D is definitely on the benzylic position. And A is also on the benzylic position. B is on the allylic position. But we know that benzylic trumps allylic, so let's cancel out B. Now between A and D, D is going to be the most acidic because it's actually not only in the benzylic position, but it's also in the allylic position. D is going to be the most acidic hydrogen.